Today we are having a look at a rather peculiar camera. This one here, quite chunky, big camera, quite plastic as well, creaks a bit when you hold it. Now the thing that uh, makes its camera special is that it uses floppy disks for a storage medium, not something you encounter every day anymore. And yeah, of course the, the resolution is quite low also because of that, it's not even one megapixel. So you get like around seven shots or so uh, on each floppy disk at the highest quality. Now this particular camera is a Sony Digital Mavica MVC FD91. The first cameras in this uh, Mavica series or Digital Mavica series to be precise were released in 1997, the FD5 and FD7. There is also an older lineup of Mavica cameras and they were released in the 1980s and they were quite different technology since they were basically analog video stills cameras so they captured stills from a video feed bit different technology. And Sony reused this Mavica name in the 90s for these cameras. Of course, uh, floppy disks are a magnetic storage, so I suppose that's the main reason why they reused the name Mavica. At the time when this camera was new, it was quite logical to use floppy drives as a storage medium, because they were cheap, they were everywhere, like basically every computer had a floppy drive, so you could easily transfer them. And also the size of them was very good for the early internet, so yeah, you could quite easily take a photo and like send it by email to someone or Put it on your website. So yeah, quite practical at the time. Now, why did I get this camera? Like what use could you possibly have of this today? My main reason for being interested in these cameras is of course because they use floppy disks as a storage medium. It's both like ridiculous and fantastic at the same time. I mean, this uh, floppy drives is a technology that, well, it's, they seem quite archaic today. And I guess it's the technology that a lot of people are happy to have left behind. It would be fr quite frustrating to have to use this still today for your, um, I mean, backup and storage and file transfer. But nowadays when you don't have to use them for your daily computer needs, they're actually quite fun to use. And this camera is extremely fun to use, <laughs> even though the resolution is quite low, it's very slow. I mean, the menus are a bit difficult to navigate. And I mean, you wouldn't use it for like making, I don't know, a wedding shoot but for like taking fun everyday photos with a quite uh, old aesthetic, they are quite fantastic. Now I have known about these cameras and how that people like talking about that they exist, but it was not before I saw the LGR video about these cameras that I got interested in getting one myself. Finding these cameras is quite difficult, of course. I mean, they are 20 years old digital cameras, which might not work anymore. So actually getting one in a working good condition is not that easy. I was looking a while online for them, but I couldn't really get get anything that was like satisfactory. But this one I actually found in a thrifting store. I'm quite surprised because it shouldn't be that that common. I wasn't expecting it at all, but I was quite satisfied that I finally, finally had found one of these cameras, which I've been looking for for some time. When it comes to features, well, first of all, we can talk about the handling of the camera. It is quite big, but the grip is actually quite good. It feels satisfactory, let's say, in the hand. It doesn't slip or fall or anything. It creaks quite a lot though, it's like, I guess it's because it's old, maybe some screws need to be tightened. And well, the lens on the camera is a, as I said, a Sony video lens. It goes from 5.2 millimeter to 72.8 millimeter. And the maximum aperture is 1.8. The sensor behind the lens is a 0.8 megapixel CCD sensor. It has some features which fit very well to modern mirrorless cameras, for example, the optical stabilization. It has an electronic viewfinder. That's actually quite surprising. You don't find that often on, on these old uh, digital cameras. And it also has a foldable screen, so you can take your selfies. Quite, uh, quite useful, actually. <laughs> and there is a flash. This is a bit difficult to open sometimes. But yeah, when it comes to low light capabilities, otherwise, well, it's a bit so, so not, you shouldn't expect too much from an old camera like this. And there's a bunch of manual settings on this camera. For example, manual exposure, not fully manual, but you can have um, aperture priority or shutter priority. There is an exposure compensation. You can set the white balance manually. There is a manual focus switch here on the camera on the side. There's also a function for a close focus. So you can do some, some kind of macros, maybe not too, too close up though. And there's one quite nice extra bonus feature in this camera. When you navigate the menus, it has this beeping, like you are playing a <laughs> computer game basically. Can be quite annoying, but I like it. It makes this camera unique. It's part of its uh, style, I suppose.
This camera also came with a carrying case, quite uh, nice for protecting the camera. And there's also a small like uh, compartment up here to put your floppy disks. It's not that uh, like secure or anything, it's a bit flimsy to be honest, but they do stay there when you have the camera also in. So let's have a look at some photos. The most fun part perhaps. So from these uh, 0 0.8 megapixel files, you get a resolution of 1024 by 768. So not so much, but still a respectable amount of pixels. It's like a mobile phone screen, basically. You don't have so much practical use of this uh, photo quality today. The reason to use this camera is really for the 90s uh, lo-fi aesthetic you get from it. And it is, well, quite fantastic, I have to say. I really do like the photos because they are so different from what you get from today's cameras. When it comes to resolution, it is very low, of course, but also the dynamic range and colors are a little bit so-so. When using modern cameras, you have plenty of all of those things, so you can be quite sloppy when taking pictures. But this one, you have to be quite spot on if you're gonna get any, like, uh, interesting photo let's say you cannot really crop afterwards and you need to have a well, well quite well defined subject when taking pictures some photos i've seen from these mavica cameras they do remind me of like 90s computer games so they do have that aesthetic going for them as well so that's quite interesting i would say let's take a selfie here in between and it's quite quite nice to have a screen to look at to look at it yourself but if i look at the screen i'm not looking at the lens so it's still a bit challenging let's see what we got here. I look like I'm judging someone. Now oh, it looks less uh, judgmental. <laughs> Let's try one with flash. I don't know which one is better. <laughs> well, anyway, there is also a video mode on this camera and well, yeah, I can actually demonstrate it here and now. The, you are supposed to be able to record the full floppy disk. If you press the shutter button once, it will record for five seconds a video. Now, if you hold it pressed, it should uh, fill up the whole floppy disk. So there are two different resolutions. On the lower one, you should get like 60 seconds. On the higher resolution, you should get like um, 15 seconds, if I remember correctly. So I will hold, I don't know what resolution it is on. Um, it is on the lower one. Let's just uh, try to record and see how far or how long we can record. And what the sound sounds like on this camera, I'm really curious about that. There is a microphone there on top, so... One minute, three seconds I got. Ah, so it records to a buffer, then it just writes on the whole disk, and this will probably take forever. Uh, one more disk and record on the higher quality. Yeah, this is uh, higher quality. Sure. Okay, that went kind of fast. I didn't have time to say so much either. <laughs> Imagine making a whole YouTube video with uh, with this camera. Oh my god! <laughs> now you might wonder, like, why don't you just like take pictures from a modern camera and make them like say lower resolution with a filter or something, or make them look like this with a filter? Well, it's not all about the photos. I mean, that's of course one part, but it's also about using the camera. I mean, the sounds of it, the sound of the floppy drive, the fact that you're using the floppy disks. It's, yeah, it makes for quite a different experience. It makes it well, more real than trying to well, simulate it with just filters. Of course, you also need to have a floppy drive, preferably also a vintage computer and a CRT monitor. I don't have a CRT monitor here at the moment, so I haven't actually been able to view them in a CRT, and, but supposedly they should look better in a CRT because they display pixels a little bit differently than modern screens. Yeah, but that's uh, one project for the future, I guess. Now this camera made me more curious about uh, vintage uh, digital cameras in general, but also specifically about these Mavicas. There are many different models still to explore. There's also like CD models and also models which use uh, memory sticks, I think. So yeah, there's a lot of different cameras to hunt down and find. If you happen to get the chance to try one of these cameras, well, definitely, definitely do that because it's quite a different experience when it comes to photography. But yeah, I will definitely use this camera more and try to find, well, interesting subject that suits its low resolution. But yeah, I think this is all for this video. Uh, if you have any questions, you can always write in the comments. Well, yeah, thanks for watching and see you in my next video. Bye.